you can hear me i guess the others can hear me as well hello ladies and gentlemen so thank thank you so much for joining us today of course uh and thank you for rejoining now for the second session this second uh session is going to be presented by dr fadia Braktia, who is an educator with experience in teaching culturally and linguistically diverse students in elementary secondary and university settings she is um, experienced in content-based um, and immersive language teaching and learning. She worked closely with pre-service teachers in addressing languages and cultural responsiveness in K-12 settings. Perhaps you'd like later on, of course, to explain what do you mean by uh, K-12 for our Algerian participants, Fadia, sure. She has uh, international experience working in Algeria, China, the United States, Costa Rica, and Russia. She earned an EDD in literacy, as well as awarded the United States Fulbright Foreign Language Teaching Assistant Grant. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Dr. Braktia. The, floors, the floor is yours, uh, Fedia. Thank you very much, Jalul, for the introduction. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about something called text stats and about K-12. When I say K-12 here in the United States, I mean uh, primary school to high school. That's what they uh, that's why they what they mean when they say uh, K-12. It's primary school to high school. Um, so before I start talking about text sets and what text sets are, I would like to talk about something called content-based learning or content-based instruction. Uh, and that mostly means that, um, so you all here maybe are English teachers, but um, we don't teach English as like, I'm gonna teach grammar and then I'm gonna teach listening and then I'm gonna teach writing, but you're gonna teach the language through a content or the language through um, a, a topic. So as you can see here in the slides, we have content and we have language and they both intertwine on the same level in the middle. And that's where you get content-based uh, instructions or content-based learning. So you're gonna teach math, but you're gonna use English to teach math. Um, so that's what content-based or content based learning or content instruction, contact, content based instruct, uh, instruction. So the benefits of that is that not they develop knowledge about a topic and they develop linguistic skills. So you're hitting two birds with one stone. So you're teaching a topic. It can be any topic of interest, uh, can be science, math, it can be about a person, history, anything. But um, at the same time, they're gaining the skills, the language skills can be French, English, Arabic, even if you're an Arabic teacher, you still have to develop your language skills, but you're doing that through learning about a topic. So that is what content based learning or content based instruction. There are so many methods of content based learning. There is a themed that's what I have done. I have done themed uh, content-based learning and there is immersive. I have done immersive where you live in that environment. There is sheltered that they use here in the United States. So there are so many of them. Um, I have only done themed and immersive, but this is mostly general what we're gonna propose today. So as you teach content-based and you have content-based instructions, you're gonna hit five literacies. Um, here in the United States, in the field of education, they use the word literacy a lot. We have five literacies that are required for the 21st century. So as you can see here, I have the content language acquisition. So it's not just, as you can see, it's not just the language acquisition, it's the content. It means all the language that comes around that topic or around that uh, content acquisition. I'm acquiring language that is just not English, but the vocabulary around a certain topic, math or whatever. And I'm um, required, like you're gonna hit five skills, or I think you all call them skills. We have reading, listening, writing, thinking, and speaking. But what does it mean? Uh, what does it mean reading in content-based learning? It means that your students 
are able to navigate the text purposefully. It means they know the vocabulary, they know the structure, they know anything that is needed in that content, in that topic, to be able to read a text. Because I might be able to read English, but you can give me um, a medical text and I read it and I have no idea what I'm reading. That's the thing, is that, but if I did content-based learning on medical texts, I, I am able to read that text and understand it. The second thing is uh, writing. Um, what does it mean writing? I can write in English, but I can't write again. I go back to medical texts. I can't write medically. Uh, or if you're not a researcher, you can write, but you can't write a research paper. So when we talk about writing in context-based learning is that your students or the learners are able to write using the language of the context. They can use the vocabulary, they can use the structure, and they can put it in writing format. Speaking, what does it mean? It means also I can speak using the language of the content. I can use the vocabulary, the, the, con the, the vocabulary, the structure, everything that comes within that content or that topic. Um, same thing we have listening. Listening, if I hear a specialist, if I hear someone in the field talking about my topic, I can understand what they're talking about. Again, I go back to the say, I'm not in the medical field. If I hear a doctor talking, it sounds like gibberish to me. I have no idea what you're talking about. But if I was an expert in that field, I would understand them because I have the content literacy. I understand I am equipped, whatever that I need or to understand what you're talking about. And then we have thinking, which means I am able to think using the content literacy. Like I can think using all those vocabularies, all that so structures. I can interact, like I can think, generate thoughts, which are going to lead to all the other literacies. So I can think and write, I can think and speak, I can think and listen, and I can think um, uh, and read. So those are the five literacy that you want to hit when you are doing content-based learning. So I hope you all have a uh, at least an, an, a small understanding of what content-based learning is. So now that we all established what content-based learning is, I want to talk about text sets. So the first question you'll have is, what on earth is a text set? A text set is a group of sources, a group of resources. So uh, if I might use an Arabic word here, huzma, majmu'a min al-masadir, a group of resources, it can be text, and then I'm going to define what a text is, is like a group of materials, materials that is around a certain topic that I want to teach my students. So it's a group of materials that I want to use um, to teach my students a certain topic. Again, it can be science, history, whatever your topic you're picking to teach. But I want to explain what is a text. Um, Y'all, when I say a text, you're going to think about a book. But actually, everything, everything is a text. Any form of, form of material that you can get information on that relates to your topic is a text. So a map can be a text, a picture can be a text, a video, uh, a song, social media posts can be text, websites can be text, books, articles, any type of material that's going to add meaning, which we're going to go back here, to your um, text set to start with, and then to the topic that you're gonna teach is qualifies as a text. The second thing is that, okay, so you have all these texts that are related to the topic, but they have to add meaning. Like, let's say you're gonna teach your students about history, Algerian history. You have so many texts about Algerian history, but which one adds meaning and context to what you are teaching? That's what you, the question that you need to ask. What is going to ask, what is going to add meaning and context to the topic, to the specific topic that I have picked? Um, text sets, because you have varied exposure to so many, so your students, you're going to offer them, they're going to learn about a topic, um, but they're not going to just read a book about that topic. They're gonna read a book, watch a movie, go through a website, read a poem, read a, a, a social media post. So that gives them, it 
different exposures of different format and those different formats are going to enhance their learning literacies so at the same time you're teaching the language let's say you're teaching english you're teaching the content and you're hitting writing and reading if they're writing something that's a writing skill that you're reading you're hitting if they're listening to a video so that's a listening so your students are gaining that vocabulary in multiple formats at different levels so that's going to make it easy for them to gain those literacy that we want them to have it's going to make it easy for them to write and read and speak in english and about that topic um so yeah so that is what is a text set and i'm going to go um in details about that and what is and how they function so the next thing is that what is the benefit of a text set so the benefit of having a text set, of having that husma, of husma of materials that you're going to have to uh, use to teach your student is that you're going to keep them engaged. So you're going to keep them engaged in the learning process, which is very important because you're offering them multiple ways of learning that thing. You're giving them multiple formats of learning a certain thing and even learning a language if you're here English teachers. Um, you're not just here to teach to learn English, but you're here to teach about this certain topic. The second thing is that you're building background knowledge. You're teaching your students something about uh, something, a topic, and they don't know about it. So you're going to take your time, build the knowledge on that topic. You're going to start with a simple text that they can use to introduce that knowledge and you're going to build on top of it and you're going to build and build and build. So what you're doing here, you're building background knowledge in content and you are improving a literacy skill or a language skill. And the third one is learning preferences. This is very important. Some people like to read. Some people like to watch things to learn from. When you create a very diverse text, book you are giving your students options like if you don't like to read here's a video to watch you don't like videos here's a listening to do so you are giving your students options to pick what works for them and go from there at least you're giving them the ground and then they go up the other thing is the level and this is why i think that text sets are very important because the level you have different learning levels in your classroom you have students who are very advanced and your students are still trying to catch up with the others so when you build a text set you're going to start from the lowest level that you have and go build up to the highest and i will show you what it means so you're going to pick texts that are easy to understand and start build more difficult 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 until you reach to the highest level of difficulties but like that you have included all your student levels from the lowest to the highest all right so those are the benefits of um text sets all right so um i'm gonna go through the steps with you of building a text set but I want to tell you a little bit. So I'm going to show you an example of one of my students, and we're going to go through that to learn about how to make a text set. So uh, this the last semester, the spring semester, uh, I taught at the University of uh, Sam Houston State University. I teach um, K through six. It means teachers who are going to teach in primary school. I taught them how to teach content based le learning and um, I, one of the requirements in class was for them to make a text set. So their text set had to include the following. They had to have at least four informa information, informational books, sorry. They had to have two fiction books. They had to have two articles and they had to have two videos. They had to have one website and they had to have one poem. So that was a requirement for one of my classes. So I wanna start, so one of my students, Sam, did a great job, if you'll give me a second to share hers with yours, with you all, and then I'll go from there. So yeah, so they were, my students were required to build a text set and um, Sam, Sam did a great job with that. So that's an example uh, of how to, uh, of one text set that my student built. Um, so let me start with the first step and then 
we'll share. So the first step to creating a text set is you're gonna pick a topic, right? Even if you're an English teacher, you're a science teacher, you're a chemistry teacher, you have a topic. Um, so the first thing to do, you're gonna pick a topic. So let me show you how Sam went, did that. All right, let me do this. Share, all right, are you, are you all able to see uh, the text set? Jalul, is it visible? It is, yes. Okay, so, um, um, just give me a second to fix this. Okay, so uh, this is Sam, one of my students. So let's see here, as you can see here, this is her topic and level. So she picked second grade in middle school and primary school. Her subject is science and her topic is sharks and sea animals. So that is the first step. So Sam, I uh, told Sam, oh, told all my students, you need to pick a topic. You need to a subject, topic, subject, and grade level. If you're teaching third grade, fifth grade, high school, university, it doesn't matter. So here, Sam picked second grade, her subject was science and her topic was sharks and sea animals. All right, now that I have my topic, what am I gonna do? So the second thing that you do when you have your topic is that what you're gonna do, you're gonna have to decide what are the learning goals? What are the learning goals for that unit or sequence? Like what, what skills do you want your students to achieve once you're gone through that textbook, so that text set? So what's the learning goals? In the US here, we call them the TEKS. I have an example here. In the US, we call them TEKS, as you all can see here, which means Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills for Second Grade. And in the US, we have them uh, by uh, subject, by content. So um, if you're an English language art reading, this is what the government wants you to do. Those are the language skills that uh, the, your students should have at the end. If you are, let's say, a social studies or science, this is what the government, the Texas state wants you to do. So I ask my students to go through these and see what, their what skills their text set is going to cover. And for Algerians, if I have any Algerians here, I think that the text you... Yours, I think this is the, the, the closest I found, if you're an English teacher or if you're not, the closest I found was the, the sequence that you have all your, in your book sequences. Uh, I don't know why it isn't opening, but in your books, you have a sequence, right, Jalul? They have a sequence yep. and they do have, here we go. Are you all able to see this? Yes. Okay, so you do have the the... The objectives here, if you're an English teacher, this is just for me to connect the slides to the Algerian context. So you do have like, a, it can be these or you can make your own. So um, I don't know what you teach. If you teach English, it can be these. If you don't, you can make your own or see what your uh, institution requires you to, to, to like cover. So once you have covered your learning objectives, so the other question that you have to cover is that what are the big ideas and questions that students should know? What, when I go through the text set, students learn so much, what is the big question that students are, should be able to answer after they go through the text set? What are the big ideas that students should be able to discuss after they go through a text set? So those are two things. After you have your goal, uh, you have your topic. Okay, what's my learning goal? What am I trying to hit? So let's go back to Sam's here. Where is Sam's? So let's go back to Sam's example. Um, sorry. So Sam, no, this is content literacy, sorry. Um, here. Sorry. Okay, so here's Sam. So Sam did go to the website of the government, what the Texas government asks. She's, because she's teaching two things, she's teaching language, which is English here, and she's teaching to science. She picked for science the, the learning goals here. As you can see, identify the basic needs of plants and animals, because she's talking about, so her objective is to start, students should know about sharks, 
what they eat and where they live and other sea animals. So this is science. She went to the teaks and she find what fits, like identify basic needs of plant animals. It is in her objective. Compare way living organisms depend on each other and other environments. That's why she included other sea animals. So when she reached to the language, because we are talking about content language, we're still talking about there is a vocabulary, there is a structure, there is a way of using the language of the content. She did include the English teaks. It means as a language learner or as a learner of that content, what are the skills that I need to acquire doing through going through this text step? So she established her learning goals and she established what's the biggest idea in her objective and she established her learning goal. All right, so after you establish the learning goals, you're gonna have to start making your text set. Okay, so I have an idea of what I want my students to learn. Now I'm gonna start building my text set. So the first thing, um, I have to be honest, I did not ask my students to make an anchor text, but the anchor text is the most difficult text you want your students to be able to read or understand. So that's the big one that you learn, that you get. And the anchor, your anchor text is the most comprehensive of the topic. Your anchor text is on the top. I don't know if you all can see my face. So it is your anchor text should be on the top and the other ones are going to build to your anchor text. So it is the highest, it's the most difficult text for their students to read and it is the most comprehensive. So you're going to build with other text to reach to your anchor text. And you can always go back to your anchor text. So I think I did not ask my students to do anchor text, but it is always have, it's good to have when it's like the achieving your goal at the end. Um, so now you have your anchor text. Then once you have identified your topic, your grade level, your anchor text, you start choosing supporting text. So I ask my students to have 15 items um, and I ask them to rank them on complexity. So here, as you see complexity, which means you wanna start from the easiest, the easiest level to the highest. You wanna build, again, you wanna build your knowledge, build, 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 to get to the highest level. It has to align with your line of inquiry. It has to answer some question or align with step one. You see step one where we said, okay, these are my learning goals. They have to align. Like you have all the texts you pick have to be in connection or has a relationship to the topic, to the questions that you want your students to be able to answer. And you want to have a range of type, like you want to have videos, you want to have texts, you want to have books, you want to have articles, you want to have a variety of texts. As I said, a text, it's not just one thing, everything is a text. So you want to have a, some type of diversity in a text. And it matters even with adults. Um, I used to run, I was a program coordinator of an immersive program. We taught Arabic to Americans. So our their foreign language was Arabic. And um, I had students ask for a different exposure. Like they said, okay, the teacher is just making us read the text, but I want to watch videos and see body language. And I'm like, that makes so much sense that just reading doesn't make it for you. So we started making text sets because I want to hit all those learning preferences. So um, that is step three. Let me see. So yeah, so, uh, and then you're gonna organize them, like I said, from the easiest to the hardest. So let's look a little bit about what Sam did. So as you can see here, Sam did have started her uh, textbook with nonfiction books. And she had the first one was Shark, Sharks, um, which is a nonfiction book. Then she had another nonfiction book it's called Shark Lady. Um, she also had Sea Turtles book to cover how, uh, how, how uh, uh, animals live together. Um, she had a book about dolphins. Um, this is going to the sea shark, rainbow fish. She had, um, what is this? This is an article that she used. Uh, she used another article. This is a video I think that she used and she built her uh, text set. Um, so once you have all your texts and everything, you want to uh, start planning. So now I have all my materials. This is, I have the topic. I want to teach about sharks like Sam, Samantha wanted to do. Um, I have all my texts. 
So now, what am I, how am I going to plan my day or my classes around the text set? So this is something that we use. So you divide your week. I don't know how many weeks do you teach or how many days do you teach per week, but you can use this table. So you can use the text to say day one, use the text that you're going to use. You're going to do front loading. I'm going to explain what front loading is. You're going to do a vocabulary activity and then you're going to do a back loading activity. So you can use this table just to organize your texts and then I'm going to go on how you can do that. So first thing I want to explain to you what front loading is. What voc I mean, you all know what vocabulary is and what backloading is. So those are planning strategies that I teach my students to do. Front loading is that it is a strategy that helps you build or draw on schema. Like I want to say knowledge here before it is taught. So what you want to do, front loading is a pre-reading. Front loading is a pre-reading activity. It means before you start reading your book, you want to know, or your book, or watching your video, or looking at your picture, you want to know what your students know about the topic. And there are activities aligned with that. Then you start reading your book, and you want to build vocabulary around your topic. So there are activities that you can do to either build vocabulary or check if the vocabulary is being acquired. After you're done with your text, I read my text, I watched my video, I did all that, you're gonna do a backloading. A backloading activity, which means I wanna check if my students learned. Did they, did I make a difference? Did they gain the knowledge that I wanted them to gain through either that text and you can do a whole unit. So we're talking about text sets here, so it's about a text. Um, so I have, so my students and I, like this takes me so much to teach. <laughs> this is just front loading and vocabulary. I sincerely don't mean to like rush through it, but um, my, I have this, what I call teacher's toolkit, which I will share with you all. Um, this is something that I built with my students. Let me try to open it. All right, so I will share with you all this. Um, maybe to open it, I need to do this. So this is a toolkit, I will share it with you. Uh, I have built it with all my students. It has strategies. Um, it has videos here. If you, if you see a page, that's the book that we use for class. It's called um, Becoming Fluent in the Language of Content. Um, if you don't have it, it's okay, but I have videos for most of the strategies or the, I have, they have videos. I will share this with you all so that you can all benefit from it. Uh, but my students, uh, I worked with them in dividing what strategies which we all can use. Let's say today I'm reading a text. Um, so front, front loading activities can be visual concept. I think I know anticipation guide. So this is a list of what I can do. And then I can do a vocabulary activity, which is word wall, visual map, password. My students love password, a graphic organizer. So all those are activities that I do during the reading of the book or the text. Um, the other thing is that I'm done reading. Now I need to check exit tickets. I think a lot of teachers are familiar with exit tickets. And then you have three to one is like write three facts that you already knew, two facts that you learned, or one and one fact that you want to learn in the future. Journals, you can have them journal. Um, you can have them write a journal about what they learned. Um, so, so those are, I just wanted to explain to you the strategies, but let's say, I'm, let's go back here. So let's say on day one, I have a certain text that I picked. I'm going to start building. I'm going to do a front loading activity, vocabulary, back loading activity. Then I'm going to go back to day two, excuse me, drink some water. Use a different text from a text set, front loading, vocabulary, and back loading. So I want to show you an example of how my students a plan around the text. <clears throat> so let me show you an example. Um, who and someone annotated this <laughs> red line on my screen? And is it me? Anyway. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let me see. I think this one is better. Oh, is it the same? <clears throat> or maybe two.
I can show you both, it's not a problem. Um, okay, let me go to this. So this is a lesson plan that included front loading vocabulary and back loading that my students planned. This is their text. This is the text they used. It's called What Are Planets? <clears throat> um, and this, as you can see, are the learning goals and the ticks they want to hit. This is the objective that they wanted to reach. What's the purpose? Identify planets and Earth solar system and their position in the sun. So this is the objective of this lesson plan. And this is the objective of using this, this text. So then they explain what they're going to do, but then they move here and their front loading strategies outside inside circle. So here they will tell me what the teacher will do, what the learner will do, and then they would time it. <clears throat> tell me how much time is going to work, how much time this activity will take around the text. So this is an activity before your students read this text. As your student read the text, I ask my students to have a vocabulary activity. So here this, uh, I think, uh, I don't know who this was, but they have two activities. Dr. Dr. Yeah. Brechtia, just yeah. a minute. We, we can't see what you are. You, oh. We can't see your, you are sharing, apparently you are sharing a different. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the screen yeah. didn't change for a while. It was oh. still stuck on the on the book by your student oh i am so sorry you didn't see the plans and everything mm -hmm. no no oh, yeah i was stuck there for a while okay i am so sorry it's okay but well okay let me reshare mm -hmm. did you all see the strategies the front loading and the vocabulary and the back loading no i don't think so Because for a while it was stuck there and we thought that this is some kind of reason from our part, but apparently it was a problem with sharing. Yeah, all of that was not. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. It wasn't. No, no, no. We apologize. Okay, let's say again. Mm -hmm. So you have your text set. Um, you want to divide, you can't teach the whole text text in one day. So you're going to divide your text day throughout days. <laughs> but um, what, so the thing, the strategy that I teach my students to do is to do a front loading, vocabulary, back loading, which means a pre-reading activity, as you all can see. This is an activity you do before you read the text, a vocabulary activity to check if this vocabulary is being acquired and then a backloading activity, which means I have finished reading my text and I wanna make sure that my students learned what I wanted them to learn. So that's what front loading means, what vocabulary means and what backloading means. So I have uh, those strategies that I will share with you. I will send you the toolkit that I have with my students. You can click on the videos. It will explain to you what each one of them mean. So front loading, you can do, I think I know, anticipation guides are really good. Anticipation guides, it means you develop a series of questions on your topic and your students say yes or no. And that way, you know, you can understand what your students know and what they don't know. So I really like anticipation guide. The KWL chart is really good too. It's like you're going to draw three lines and you're going to ask your students, what do you know about sharks? You're going to write everything your students know about sharks. The second is that, um, what do you want to know about sharks? So they will tell you, I want to know this and I want to know that. And then at the end of the text, what did they learn? So that is a, a front loading and a back loading activity. Um, you have word walls are really good. Password is really good uh, vocabulary activity, which I will share with you. And it's not just for English teachers, but for all uh, content teachers. And then at the end, you're going to check if my students learn. The exit ticket is so easy. Just write what you learned in this session. Journal entries, just journal about what you learned from this text. Um, I, I just wanted to show you what my students did. They had to plan a lesson around one text they had in their text set. Um, let me stop sharing very quick and share again. Make sure that I'm sharing the correct one. Okay. Okay, do you see now? Yeah. Okay, 
So this is um, what one of my students did. So their topic is science and planets. Uh, this is one lesson around one text. This one lesson around one text. Um, so they wanted to teach. So the, their uh, the learning, <clears throat> their techniques. They got them from the science, um, and this is what they did. This is the text they used, which was uh, what are planets. <clears throat> so what I asked them to do is to uh, pick. First thing, as you can see here, is their front front loading strategy. So they you picked outside in South Circle. So what I asked them to do is tell me you as a teacher what you will do, the learners, your students will do, and how much time is going to take. So that's timing is very, very important. So this section is before reading the book. <laughs> then when they read the book, while they read in your book, this group of students picked to do a password to check our vocabulary or enhance vocabulary learning. This is what the teacher will do. This is what the learner will do. And it takes them 15 minutes. OK, now I'm done reading. I'm done reading the text. I need to do some backloading, which means I need to check for learning. <clears throat> so they picked the 231. So they have a worksheet. It's like write three things they learned, two topics they found interesting, and one question they still have trouble understanding. So like this, I have introduced one text. And I um, checked if the students learned from that text. <clears throat> okay, let me go back to my slide. Okay, um, so this is how you plan around one text. And then you're gonna go back here and start plugging in. So day one, I'm gonna read on planets. I'm gonna do this front loading strategy. I'm gonna do vocabulary and then I'm gonna do a post reading strategy. And again, I will share with you the toolkit that I have with my students and you go one, two, three until you finish your text set. Um, some of the resources I wanna leave time for uh, <clears throat> questions. I have videos on what is a text set and uh, the toolkit, <clears throat> but I think uh, you all need to know about Newzilla. Let me open my Newzilla here. Okay, let me just uh, stop sharing and get the new Zilla. Uh, you can all start typing your questions in the bottom while I figure out my new Zilla thing. Right, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have questions, please type them in the chat box. And I'm going to try to take your questions to Dr. Brechtia. Um, we'll give her a minute to... <coughs> Yes, just a second to... Uh, yes. In the meantime, up. you can put your questions down in the chat box and try to highlight them and get as many as possible to Dr. Brechtia. This is probably for you all an interesting also part. So... Okay, I have my new Zilla out, so just um, let me share. So are you all able to see my new Zilla? Mm -hmm. So new Zilla or makes text sets for you. It's a website, it is free. You just have to sign in. It is free, you don't pay. It builds, uh, it builds text sets for you around your topic. So let's say my topic is um, <laughs> um, so here you write <laughs> um, I don't know I have I don't know how I research Texas history it's probably for my students or uh, let's say um, climate change. It gives you text sets already there. So if I pick this topic, it will show me a set of texts that my students can read. This is one. And here like a set of them that you can assign, your students can sign in. And the coolest thing about New Zilla is that you can pick the reading level. So as you can see here, this is the lowest level they have. If you have like, uh, depending on the reading level of your students, 
let's say your university level or your high school, I can up it to max, but it's the same text. It's not a different text. It's just the number of words and the difficulties of words they have in the article. So I can go in the middle and it is still the same text, but it's just the reading level of the text is different. So that's why I really love Newzella and I encourage each one of you to use Newzella. Uh, there are other things, um, just uh, <clears throat> let me share with you the toolkit so you all understand what I'm talking about, because that is something that we really worked hard on with my students. Um, and I think that was really helpful for them just to, um, to look on it. It was just something easy to refer to. And I will send you the table that says, this is a pre-reading, this is a pre -reading, this is vocabulary, this is after reading. I will send you this. So um, if you are interested, of course, Share. So this is the toolkit that we have. Uh, 3315 is the name of my class, so don't mind that. Um, but this is like all these are strategies and they have videos. If they have pages, as like as I said, it's just from our book. But most all of them have videos. So you can go through them and pick whatever works for you. Most of those are videos that explain to you what the strategy is. And if you're all interested, I can share with this with you all. Um, I hope all this makes sense to you. <laughs> and I am opening the floor for questions if you all have one. Any questions? Uh, I don't know, Jalul, is, are you here? Um, all right, I'm back. All right. A little now had a little. Yes. Um. So internet okay. issue. It's okay. Um. So I'm trying to scroll through the questions. There are so many. Again, you can email me. <laughs> can we to approach complement each other as well? I don't know what is. How can CBA be different from CBA? What is CBI and A? Acquisition. From Halim, I don't know, this is a direct question. How could you share a few pieces of advice of the time management because of time go beyond control? Yes, that is why I ask my students when they plan to have the time approximately what each activity, like you have to go into details. I know time management is one of the hardest, uh, uh, hardest thing that teachers face, but you have to time yourself. I had, because I was program coordinator, I had to supervise teachers. I tell them, I, I take my watch and be like, time, time, or write the paper and in your face. Like you have to time your strategies. Like pre-reading is gonna take me 15 minutes, you stick to 15 minutes. So time each strategy, each uh, approach you're using, make sure you're timing it. Um, what level should we use in this metal? So any level, that's why we were talking, any level, like you have first grade, you have Sana Ula Ibtidai, you can use this. You have like a, a university, you can, this is, it's just the text that you use is what are, is the, what is going to define um, the level. So any level, it doesn't matter. You're teaching first grade, primary school, university, it really doesn't matter. As long as the texts you're using, make sure they fit the level and make sure you have different levels so that your low level students can understand or start building. Like I start from low and I build up, 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 up until I get to the highest. Uh, uh, I can take your questions back. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I had the disconnection. So we, we talked about this issue before. So <clears throat> here it happens, right? So um, uh, did you get the question about time management? Yes. Yeah, so that's why I said you did. strategy. Yes. All right. So uh, is it possible to use more than one text in one session? Yes, yes. yes. Um, if it's, let's say you have a picture, just make sure you can black, pick them in one or two. Just your strategy, right. your inclusive of all your texts. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of uh, questions about time management. So I don't know if you want to elaborate on that if, or if you have done so already, that's, yeah, that's I think okay. The best one is to, I mean, you have, as teachers, we all know that sometimes we mm -hmm. plan and time change and you find your mm -hmm. students need help with something. 
but plan ahead of time. Make sure you know what each strategy is going to take you to go through. Plan ahead of time. All right. So um, there is a question here about CBI and CBA uh, because uh, CBA here is very famous, competency-based approach. So how can the two approaches complement each other? I have to be honest. I don't know what competency approach is. Um, yeah, yeah, because it's very, it's very popular here in Algeria. Uh, uh, it's based on competencies, uh, very popular, and most of the curricula now is based on this. Not only in English, of course. So All right. I feel like, I feel like co content is inclusive of competency because mm -hmm. you're teaching the skills that are required to. Sure reach that level of reading speaking or learning in that field so mm -hmm. i think it is embraceive like it embraces that level i think someone here asked about grammar i am not yeah grammar yeah, yeah. <laughs> just grammar. so the way we did content based when teaching a language we addressed grammar shortly because when you're exposing your students to the structure in different ways they get the structure we stopped and addressed, we did a grammar level lesson when we saw the students were struggling with something. So right. you can have, um, if you see that you need to teach that grammar lesson, teach it quickly and bring it back to your text, bring it back to your context, bring it back to your topic, because if you don't relate the grammar to your context, the grammar is not going to be retained. All right. So do like a pop-up grammar, right? Yes. Like All make right. you connect the two and don't speak. I am not a grammar person. So I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm not the person. I don't like teaching grammar. Mm -hmm. um, there is, uh, I think that uh, these have been um, questions that have been asked many times before about the level of the learners. Did you, did you discuss that? The level of the learners that no, is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the purpose of the text is to uh, include all the levels. If you have a classroom that has multiple levels, the purpose of a text set is that your text set has multiple levels. Your text set should have multiple levels so that you're inclusive of all your students. And again, always start from the easiest, use the easiest text that you have and build to the complex, the most complex of them all. All right. All right. So that, that time management thing was a concern of many people here because as uh, I have one comment here, um, students have only two to three hours of English per week. This is why they are, of course, concerned about time management, especially that they have to finish uh, a curriculum within a, a given time. So this is why and I guess that these questions are basically asked, of course, by middle and high school teachers. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and this is a real issue, of course. Yeah, uh, I, I mm -hmm. said time, and you don't have to have 15 items. That sure. was because my students had to do a big project. That's part of them passing the class. If you need two or three texts, that's fine. You, <coughs> as well as the expert. Mm -hmm. I just want to address something here. Someone said, how do we assess learning? As I said, you have three when you use a text, two text, three text, you have three uh, steps. You start before the learn, before reading, and then you do a vocabulary activity, and then you do an after reading activity. <clears throat> I mean, I can't, like, I was just trying to push in everything in one hour. Like my students seriously take a semester to learn all these. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so someone is talking about KWL. Yes. So all these are going to be in the kit, the kit. Um, and you can learn from them, I hope. I mean, we're reaching an end to the workshop. I hope this at least helped you, help you understand something and <clears throat> was helpful for you all. All right. I think that uh, this was great. Fadia, Dr. Brechtia, thank you so much for your presentation, for taking the time to answer the questions. There have been really many and there are still other questions, perhaps you want to take a look at them later on. 
And uh, we would certainly, of course, elaborate on much of what you have said um, in, in, uh, in a second, inshallah, uh, training and in a second workshop where we can go perhaps to one specific, of course, um, area or one specific aspect of the approach that you have talked about today. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry, I, I have put down sure. my email there. Sure. there and then we yeah, yeah, have... put down. This is this is uh, Dr. Bractius' email. And I don't know carry... if you can see it there in the chat yeah. box. It's <laughs> BXBO39 at SHSU dot EDU. EDU. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, since Dr. Brechtia has put her email there, that means that you can email her, ask her questions, and uh, uh, believe me, I've known her for some time now. She responds promptly to her emails. Very kind of you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Fedia, and uh, we are going to take a break. And then when we come back, we are going to have our third session today. Of course, we have two more sessions. Uh, this, the third session is going to be by uh, Gary, right? Yes, by Gary. And then the last session is going to be by me, Jalul Burahla, which uh, I'm going to talk about listening. So we go back at 4.10, right? Yes, sir, we do. Yes, and Gary's back. Gary, uh, 10 minutes, and the floor is yours. Fadia, thank you so much. Let's take a pause. You can turn your uh, cameras off and mics off if you want to. Take a break. We are going to come back. Hey, see you in a minute. Thank you, Jalul. Thank you, Fadia. That was great.